Ladies and gentlemen, my guest today is no stranger to country music. She's not even a stranger to Faraday, Louisiana. She's our very own member of Rockabilly Royalty. She's a member of the Delta Music Hall of Fame, sister to Jerry Lee Lewis. She's a singer, songwriter, and one mighty fine piano player. Linda Gale Lewis, how you doing? Well, thank you so much. What a nice build-up that I just got from you. Thank you, Brandon. Well, I'm I'm really excited to talk to you. Thank you for uh, responding to my email and getting, I mean, right away, I was like, this is going to be fun. I didn't let you know, but I was already familiar with your new single, and I was like, I need to talk to this lady bad. Oh, how nice. So, Thank I reached so out much. to you, and um, first of all, Faraday, Louisiana, how long have you, has it been since you've been back home? You know, it's been it's been a long time. Because it, it's just so sad coming back. I, I, I miss my family so much. Sure. You know, uh, my sister Frankie Jean passed away, and of course, we lost mama and daddy. It's you know, Jerry and myself left in, in our immediate family. Uh-huh. And, and it's just, it's a little bit depressing. But I mean, there are people there that I would really love to see. So I will eventually come back because I do miss my friends and my family that still left there. Now, after Faraday, uh, did you go to Memphis for a while? Oh, I did. You know, I spent a lot of time in Memphis. After Mama passed away, I moved up there. And, and you know, I've stayed there for a very long time. But then when, when I married my husband, Eddie Braddock, we, we're just uh, people who move a lot. We moved from Memphis to Big Sandy, Tennessee. But first, we went to Nashville. We went from Memphis to Nashville to Big Sandy, Tennessee. And then we ended up in Wales in the United Kingdom. Wow. <laughs> and then we came back to Big Sandy, Tennessee and moved to Atlanta, Georgia. And then from Atlanta, Georgia... We moved to Austin, Texas. We have moved so many times. <laughs> I see, and you're in Austin now, which is a wonderful city. We, we are in Austin now, and it, it's a great music town. I love it. Well, let's talk about the music. Let's talk about the beginnings. Now, you're, you're younger than Jerry Lee. Was he an influence on you? How did he you in, get started in music? He inspired me. You know, from the time I was about two years old, you know, I was standing by that piano and and listening to everything that he did. You know, he's my absolute favorite piano player, singer, entertainer, everything. And plus, he's been a wonderful brother to me and taking care of me and my whole family. Mm-hmm. But yes, he's my, my big biggest influence. Now, he just celebrated uh, 85 years? He's Is- 85 years old now, and he survived a major hemorrhagic stroke. Mm-hmm. That was two years ago, and he's really doing well. He's walking now, and he's, you know, he was paralyzed for right. a, a while. He was determined. He worked really hard in physical therapy to get back on his feet again, and he's doing really well. But that was a scary thing. I make a big deal out of his birthday every year here on the show because we happen to share the same birthday, September the 29th. That's so, your birthday? That's, yeah, that's my birthday, too. <laughs> Oh, my goodness. So, so, I'll have to, that'll be easy to remember, Brandon. Yeah, I'll be expecting a card. <laughs> <laughs> it's Jerry and Brandon's birthday today. That birthday party that they had, it was amazing. You know, uh, Jimmy Swaggart came, mm-hmm. and uh, Mickey Gilly was there, and it was amazing. Well, I'm glad you mentioned that, because I was definitely going to talk about it. I've got a clip of your performance at that party, and I was blown away. I, and you could tell that Jerry was very proud. I could tell he had a lot of pride watching you play and perform. Well, you know, he taught me everything that I know, and, and he was a wonderful teacher. But I'll tell you, Brandon, I was absolutely scared to death. Really? <laughs> Nervous wreck. Think about it. I mean, I'm, I'm like six feet away from Jerry Lee Lewis and about eight feet away from Jimmy Swagger and Mickey Gilly, these three legendary piano players. And, you know, it was, <laughs> I thought, because when they told me they wanted me to do some numbers, some songs, I said, okay, that, that'd be fun. And I said, now, Jimmy and Mickey and, and Jerry, they'll be somewhere else while we're filming this, right? And the guy said, oh, yeah, yeah, they'll be somewhere else. Don't worry about it. And it came time to film it. And no, they weren't somewhere else. It was like a party in the living room.
the country boogie boogie's burning me down in my soul. That's right. It's got a hold on me. I'm your boogie woogie boogie country gal from Tennessee. Honey, I can take a bulldog. I can take his bones. I can bring him for him, check him for you all night long. That's right. It's got a hold on me. I'm your boogie woogie. And they told me I had to go on first. You know, I thought maybe I can do mine later. But I had I was the first person on, and I was a bit nervous. I could have played better. Okay. Everybody else had quite the act to follow. This morning, I started the show out with Oh Pandemic. Oh, yeah, Oh Pandemic. And I'm it is an Oh it. Pandemic. I'm, I'm just really impressed. You have heard a few like novelty joke songs about the coronavirus and things that people trying to make light of it. But when I heard this song, it's timeless. you know. And I noticed in the video, there's a lot of photographs from the uh, Spanish flu pandemic back in the early 1900s. Well, my son-in-law did that video. And, and see, I didn't even know people wore masks back then. Yeah, I didn't I either. Amazed by it. And it looks like if you could just colorize them, it looks like pictures of us today. <laughs> amazing, isn't it? You know, my son-in-law was so helpful. He he produced that song for me, and he played the instruments on it, and, and my daughter sang backing vocals with me, and, and we had so much fun doing it. But I'll tell you, I, I was really depressed for a while about this pandemic, and, mm-hmm. and you know, God gave me this song, and so I was able to write about it, and you know, it made me feel better to write about it. Music's good like that. I always say music's the best medicine. Absolutely. It came out very fast, because my son-in-law and my daughter were excited about the song. You know, I did it here at home for, for my son, Oliver, and my husband, Eddie, and, and they said it, they liked it. And then, But I was a little bit, I thought, well, it, it might be kind of okay. But I'm never, you know, that excited about something that I wrote. And I, I never think it's going to be good enough. And I was almost embarrassed to sing it and put it on my iPhone and send it to Annie and Danny. But boy, I'll tell you what, when I sent that song to them, Annie sent me back a message immediately and said, that is awesome. Mm -hmm. And the next thing I knew, Danny had recorded the tracks and everything started up. And I just went on over there to their house. And then we went in his studio and I sang it. And Annie sang it with me. And hey, it was just magic. It's slipping day by day. Oh, pandemic, you took so much from me. I won't let you drown me in your dark and endless sea. From yesterday My spirit has been broken I've cried a million tears I pray for peace and comfort And relief from all my fears Oh, pandemic You took my life away And I It only took about a week from the time I finished writing it that it was on serious radio. Right, it premiered on Outlaw Outlaw Radio. Yeah. Mojo Mojo Nixon debuted it, and I I just love Mojo. And Mojo was the first one to play it on the... And he actually played the drummer in the movie about Jerry Lee, Great Balls of Fire. That's right, he did. What about the public uh, reception for this awesome song? As it, uh, after it premiered, have you been getting a lot of good feedback? You know, I, I feel like that they are getting good feedback from Outlaw Country because uh, my friend Jeremy Tepper, uh, he sent me a, a message and said, you know, it's a hit. And, and uh, I looked today, and it's still, you know, the most heard song on Outlaw Country. It's wow. it's uh, ahead of um, all the other big stars, you know, like what? Chris Stapleton and all those people. And I mean, and there I am, Linda Gale Lewis, right up at the top. I tell you what. As you should be. As you should be, darling. Don't. <laughs> I'm absolutely <laughs> thrilled. <laughs> I, was, I was going over your discography. You work consistently. Well, I have to work really hard because, you know, like I told my brother, he said, Linda, you work too hard. You travel too much. You do too many gigs. 
And I said, you know, Jerry, you make about $100,000 when you play, and I don't make that much. So I have to do a lot more gig than you do to uh, have to survive, which is it's wonderful because I love to play. Right. <laughs> you, so have you I been able to perform any during all this mess? Or are you just trying to stay at home and stay out of the... Not a, I'm not a lot, but a little bit. I, I've played a few times. And then, you know, you go through that thing where you go out and you do a gig, and you're waiting for that 14 days to pass to see if you're going to come down with that virus. And it's scary. It it's is really scary. scary. Well, I can't risk it because, you know, it's like I said, or like I was going to say a minute ago, I always encourage my husband for us to just go ahead and spend all our money so we don't have any left and I can work because I love it so much. I love being on stage and the, the times that, that I've been offered gigs during this pandemic, I've gone out and played, I confess. When I went to Memphis in July, I mean, it was really bad. The, the numbers were way up everywhere. And I said, well, God's going to punish me because I shouldn't have been, you know, <laughs> I shouldn't have been out playing. And for 14 days, you know, I was really worried about it. And, and during that 14 days, I came down with a little 24-hour bug that Uh-oh. wasn't COVID. <laughs> it scared me to death. <laughs> but now they changed it to 10 days, so... On my next gig, I'll only have 10 days to sweat it out and count the days that go by. But, you know, I can't resist it. I love it. I love to sing and play. And it just brings me so much joy and happiness when I see that people are enjoying the music. It's just wonderful. and I'm I'm always amazed by it. I don't think God would ever punish you for doing that, by the way. (laughs) Because, honestly, I mean, I think musicians uh, have been one of the overlooked groups of people during this situation. A lot of musicians have been out of work. It's affected a large part of the industry. And I hear a lot of people out there who are just craving live entertainment. And they're they're scared to go or there's nothing happening in their area. We as human beings need music. Well, you know, they do. And and the only thing that I've been able to do is just... You know, I I do this little thing like on a Sunday morning I do, and it's just, it's not for money because there is no money involved in it. It's a restaurant where uh, around 30 or 40 people are coming there. But it's so nice to sit down and sing and play some gospel songs for them. It's a it's a gospel brunch that I do. And any gigs that I do that I have done locally or the thing that I did for my birthday party, there's really no... uh, you don't get in. You don't gain anything financially, but you just get so much joy from being on stage and 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 ex, you know and sharing the music with the audience. I, I just it, I like to share with people, you know, and I like to do. It's like I've always said. I like to do what the people want to hear and what they enjoy, and that's what I end up doing. A lot of people are wanting to showcase this song or that song, and but I'm only going to do what people want to hear and what they enjoy and and even though i can't go on tour and and do what i normally do every once in a while it's nice to be able to play and sing well christmas is here pretty much feels like christmas already i've been playing a lot of christmas music I, I, it makes me feel good oh, what are you doing this, this season are you playing much christmas music what are you doing what you know what are your plans for the holidays just the family what you got going on <laughs> i'm still trying to get over the fact that i totally missed and it was uh, it was of course canceled my christmas tour you know i do a christmas tour every year in sweden oh i didn't know that every single year and i'm seeing in my memories on facebook this coming up all my wonderful gigs oh. that i i have some regular gigs that i've been doing for years some some places that i go back each year and and i play for uh, the christmas they have these christmas tables in in sweden and it's absolutely wonderful. People are there, and they're having a, a meal, and then uh, I'm playing music, and they're getting up and dancing, and it's just the most wonderful thing. And, of course, it's, it's decorated so beautifully. And, that is magical. And they, there's snow there. You know, I love snow, and but not this year. Hmm. Well, what are you going to do instead? What Are you, are you just going to spend time with the family? Well, I try to. I just try to count my blessings. <laughs> I'm, I'm still healthy, and, and my husband is here with me. I told him the other day, I said, we shouldn't complain because we are so fortunate that we still enjoy each other's company. So we've been in this shut-in lockdown thing a lot. You know, of course, we've been together every day. It's been a test of some relationships, I'm sure. Oh, listen, I feel so sorry for people that don't have anybody. They're alone. And there's been so many suicides. And I said, we've got to thank God every day that we have each other. And and we always find a way to enjoy ourselves. We've been watching a lot of Hallmark Christmas movies. (laughs) (laughs) I've lost count. I guess we've seen hundreds by now (laughs) because we watched them back in July. 
they had a thing on called Christmas in July, uh-huh. and we watched Christmas movies then. I told Eddie, I said, we need a little Christmas right this very minute. Yeah. I, I kind of asked my listeners, like, when is it okay for me to start playing Christmas music? And the overwhelming majority are like, now, we need the positivity. Start playing it now. And, and I'm going to put up a small Christmas tree and put some lights on it. And, and you know, we're, we're going to enjoy our Christmas even though it's different from any Christmas that we've had in many, many years. I don't know. We've never had a Christmas like this. Right. Because we've never had a pandemic. But, you know, I'll cook. At Thanksgiving, I, I was here. That's the first time I've been home on Thanksgiving in 20 years wow. or something. Because it, every time Thanksgiving would roll around, I had a tour in somewhere in Europe. And I was never home. So I did really enjoy Thanksgiving dinner. And I'm going to make a nice Christmas dinner. And I can't take credit. My children did most of the cooking. <laughs> I'm, I'm just hopeless in the kitchen. <laughs> the most horrible thing is when the biscuit slid off of the, the pan and, and, and hit the element and caught on fire. Oh, fun, fun. <laughs> What's your favorite Christmas food? My favorite? Oh, my goodness. Well, you know... Um, I like those uh, honey baked hams, and mm. I'm going to try to get one of those if I can find one. Oh, you can find somebody to cook one of those for you, all ready to go. You know that thing is. I think it's pretty much. I've had one one time just that I had here at, at the house, <laughs> and I think all you do is just heat it up and see. That sounds good to me. Yeah, it does. <laughs> well, uh, that thing with that turkey at Thanksgiving. You know, I've, my daughter uh, Annie did most of the work because. I just couldn't cope. But that's a lot of trouble, isn't it, making a turkey? <laughs> yeah, I did not. I did a pot roast instead this year. <laughs> well, we had the turkey, and uh, my daughter fixed it, and uh, my son Oliver helped her, and they made dressing, homemade dressing, and it, it was absolutely wonderful. I made all the plans, and they did all the work. <laughs> that's how you do it right there. That's smart. <laughs> so what's next for you? What's the um, it's, it's, uh, what's coming up uh, as far as gigs? Anything on the agenda that we can kind of start telling folks about? Brandon, and I have been really blessed. I've had my tours postponed. Uh, I've had some that were just totally canceled, mm-hmm. but most of them in in Sweden and Norway, the promoters are just postponing the gigs and scheduling the gigs each time. And it's happened now about five times. So right now, I still have my 20 gigs, and they're happening if I can get over there They will happen at at the end of February and in March. But see, we don't know for sure. With this pandemic, we don't. I would never have thought this would have gone on this long. But if we can't do it in February, March, then they'll be they'll be moved up a couple more months ahead of that. Yeah. Well, that's fantastic. I'm glad you still they're still on the calendar at least. I'm so happy that they still want to have me, and and you know they're all regulars. It's my second home. I've spent a lot of time there. And Norway is a, a place that I go a lot. And I, I used to go to the U.K. more than I do now, but my agent there passed away. And I haven't really thought about getting another agent there because I've been busy in Sweden and Norway. And, of course, um, here in Texas, when there's no pandemic, I have quite a few gigs here in Texas at, at some really nice places. So I've been pretty busy here in Texas and in Sweden and Norway. So I've been really busy, and, and I absolutely love it. And, and, you know, my husband and I enjoy going to all these beautiful places. We especially have enjoyed going up to the north of Norway. It's so beautiful up there. And we've even been to Svalbard three times. I'm a gypsy, I guess. Well, it, it, this has been a, a real treat for me. I'm not going to keep you any longer. I want to thank you for your time. I want to thank you for your music. Can I get you to give them a shout out and say hello to the listeners here in Faraday? I love my friends in Faraday. I have my friend Judy Tellis will hear this. She is one of my childhood friends, and but I have many, many friends and a lot of family there. And I send my love, best wishes, and Merry Christmas to everyone. Thank you so much. Enjoy the rest of your day, and I'll be in touch soon. Let's stay in touch, Brandon. I like you. I like you too. Thank you. You made my day. <laughs> Thank you, darling. Hi folks, this is Linda Gale Lewis, and you're listening to The Gator Man.